You've got a Hot Rod Deluxe, but maybe it's time to upgrade. Here's three amps you should try. Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Nick here, hello. That was Ra lovely. Rather disjointed step through the venerable Hot Rod Deluxe, but before that... Housekeeping! I believe that's what you're referring to. Oh yeah. Indeed. Um, yes, before we get started, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. That'd be great. And also a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grab some merch and strings and t-shirts and hats and all the accoutrement that keeps us partying all night and, and sleeping every day. <laughs> also, if you don't like long videos, and there are apparently damn people on the planet who don't like long videos. Uh, who are these people? There are timestamps in the description box below, and also you should see in your YouTube window that you can just skip to the bits that you want to watch. Indeed. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. As we said at the top, Venerable Hot Rod Deluxe. What you heard over the beginning there was the good, bad, and the ugly of the Hot Rod Deluxe. <laughs> not, not least because I'm, you know... They should name the channels that. <laughs> wrestling uh, the, the guitar in and out of tune. But apart from that, um, we're here to ask... What comes after the Hot Rod Deluxe? It's a question we get asked a lot. So, if you don't know, the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe has been around a long time. Phenomenally popular because loud, very loud, plenty of headroom, despite mm -hmm. being only 40 watts, two 6L6 output tubes, mm -hmm. um, a single 12 inch speaker, lightweight box, mm -hmm. portable, loud, plenty yep. of headroom. And voiced in a way that makes them work at gigs. Yeah. So what stands the Hot Rod series out from, say, the more vintage reissue is they tend to have much more prominent upper mid-range. Yeah. The black panel amps uh, tend to have a scoopier mid-range until you really crank them up. Yes. Then that's where the magic happens. Yeah, at lower volumes, a bit more of a scoopier mid-range. Yeah. So the Hot Rod Deluxe is a bit more urgent sounding. Portable, loud, as we said. A good pedal platform, yep. i.e. had the headroom to take a wide uh, range of pedals. And that's why it's been so popular. For a lot of people, it's their first serious amp. So those are all the things we like about it. The things that it, that have been moaned about the Hot Rod Deluxe over mm. the years are the clean channel is too clean and too loud. Interesting. It will break up, which we'll get to in a minute, but you've got to push it. And that is way too loud for a lot of people. Sure. The taper on some of the early amps meant that it was doing, it was barking your head off by two. Yeah, right. That's only on two. That's pretty loud. It's pretty loud. Anyway, clean channel, too clean, too loud. 
overdrive channel hello has been kicked up and down forums chat rooms comment sections up and down the years i happen to think it can sound good and we're going to more or less prove that okay however the the criticism comes is don't like the overdrive channel very much would like a different flavor overdrive channel yeah. they're more, quite far apart right that's the other thing yeah so moreover what yeah. about all that space between yeah, those two yeah, channels because yeah, 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 yeah. it is actually three modes you've got the clean channel you've got the overdrive channel in its sort of single stage mode and then an extra gain stage on top okay i'll do uh, some details of the top panel so you can see it but actually all those in between sounds are quite hard to get on a on a sure. hot rod deluxe sure. given that a, a generalization but as we say it's generally true mm. <laughs> um lots of us live in between very clean and very dirty yeah totally so really we're gonna choose three amps that we own given that there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of amps out there so so what are we what are we doing we're not we're not going to say okay we're going to go from the hot rod to a marshall D, dsl 40 we're no. going to look at the things that we like about it and move yeah. on from there as opposed to sideways it's right? not about going i don't like fender amps anymore I'm yeah on yeah Vox, right or you know exactly what you just said yeah. i don't want a fender i want a marshall it's like there are things about the hot rod deluxe i really like but i just want to mold them in a certain way yeah. and move on and you know what are we talking about we're talking about upgrading so we might be looking at some flashier brands we might be looking at higher prices you know it's an upgrade what we consider an upgrade from a hot rod deluxe and lest we forget the conclusion might be do you know what i'm good i'm good thanks yeah yeah totally all that extra dosh the hot rod deluxe perhaps deserves its place in history as it does we'll we'll get to that so let's have a tour de force a quick remembrance of the hot rod deluxe daniel play ye and i will step you through um the clean mid and higher gain modes to see what you think okay all right yeah. and we'll do this briefly because this isn't about here's a demo of the hot rod deluxe it's more about where do we go from yeah there. sure yeah. sure so this is the clean channel right it is okay Very loud, very pokey. Very pokey. Bear in mind, there's no attenuation in the Hot Rod Deluxe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the mic preamps down and I'm going to push that clean channel till it overdrives. Oh, hello. You've probably never done that before, have you? No. I mean, it got there. It's not happy about being there. That's on five. Keep going. Blimey, Charlie. That's, um, that's a sound. Some people this, this, this run their hot rod deluxes like that. Okay. Loud, loud, loud. I don't know what the uh, DB meter was going at. I actually think it's a really decent overdrive tone. Do you? You don't like it? No. <laughs> I really like it. I've always liked it. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a messiness to it and a harshness to it that I, that I. It might be though. It might be the speaker. Yeah. Right, because it's that thing. There's voice for that uh, for the clean thing, and I think the clean thing does really well. It might just be the speaker doesn't. For me, doesn't like being pushed in that sort of way. Yeah, I mean that's something we perhaps should have said at the top. You know. Do, there are lots of things you can do to the Hot Rod Deluxe to to yeah. to change these things. We're not talking yeah, yeah. about that today. Okay, I'm going to just 
put the I mean I took ooh, a good fifteen dB of gain out of that mic preamp. What did the meter hit? 105. Oh, yeah, okay. 104. Okay. Um let us step forward to the overdrive channel, Daniel. Okay. No? Yeah, yeah, man. Let's do it. I'm game if you are. Like that it's very pokey, but neck pickup on the telly sounds nice. Unbelievable mid range nose on it. Yeah, oh, yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Very, very pokey. So that is with the master volume at seven and the gain about four. Okay. That sort of explains why most people don't like the hot the gain channel in the Hot Rod Deluxe. The drive was up high, the master volume was five or six, and everything's just can't cope. Yeah. It's a cool sound, could certainly be used. Yeah. But it's not your kind of nicely together. No, it's not a you're not gonna hear that and go, that's yeah. what I've been looking for. But there's more, Dan. <laughs> Wait, don't send any money, we'll bill you. There's more. So pretty much maximum gain in the overdrive extra mode. Right. Master fairly well cranked. Sure. So that's it. There's not much more after that. Okay. I just want to make a redeeming case for the Hot Rod Deluxe's overdrive channel. Okay. Excuse me while I just do this because I'm, I'm up and down a lot. It's nice to see with the strap on. Well, I did say I was up and down a lot. Let's repeat. I mean, if you play something awesome like that, it's going to sound great. But if you play something that sucked like I did, it's going to be much, much harder. I think that, that um, it was Joe Bonamassa that, that told me that. Right. We did a filming session like, once. Like, don't suck when you play. <laughs> we did a filming session once, and he had a, a Deville, it was actually. And he just plugged his Les Paul and it sounded amazing. And I said, like, how do you do that? He says, well, you just don't run it very gain. You turn the master up high and just knock the controls on your guitar back a bit. Right. So you don't get all that histrionic extra stuff. So, okay. which is all to say, the, the 
Hot Rod Deluxe Overdrive channel is much derided, but it can sound pretty decent, I okay. think, if you just treat it with a bit of care and don't be afraid to crank it a bit. Sure. I'm not rushing out to buy that, though. No, no, no. So, you know, like no. you said, it's th that poke is something else. Yeah, I think I just, I, I kind of, some people have just written it off like yeah, never, yeah. never to be used. And yeah, I yeah. don't think that's no, entirely fair. No, true. Right. Cool. So, okay. There's an overview. We didn't mention the effects loop. It's got a really good effects loop um, and very nice reverb. Yep. So let's say the first direction of travel for the Hot Rod Deluxe is back to that clean channel. It's too loud, it's too spiky. And actually, even though it is too loud and too spiky, it does go into breakup, mm. which might not be the breakup you want. So what do you want? You want a bit more headroom. You want a bit more control over the gain in that first channel because the first channel is a gain and master volume in one control. There is no master volume. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, right. So you get what you get. So maybe you want a master volume set up and just some increased tweaking ability over your clean sound. Right. Because you've got the three band EQ there, bass, middle and treble, but that's it. Mm -hmm. And a bright switch, but that's it. Victory V140. Yeah, obviously enough, because it's there. We could choose the V40 Deluxe, right? which is a 40 watt all valve. Could choose the standard V40, which is 40 watt all valve. Mm -hmm. Might in some ways be... Uh, more appropriate. More appropriate vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the hot deluxe, given that it's the same power. However, we've chosen the 140 because it is a significant step up. It's it a big step up in terms of headroom. It's a big step up in terms of tonal tweaking. Mm. It, it's a really serious... Serious, serious app. On paper, at least, a really serious upgrade. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's remind ourselves of the Hot Rod Deluxe Clean Channel. Breaking up just about. Just about. That's at two and a half on the master. Okay. Well, on the volume control. Right. V140. Slightly bigger reverb. The master volume ended up at about three quarters of the way around. Right. Very low input volume, because as you hear, it too could break up quite nicely. Yep. What's interesting about this clean channel is this. Hey. Wow. It's all the shades in between. It's amazing. All the shades in between. And because you've got that huge 140 watt, or sorry, 100 watt power section, 
you can use it all. Yeah. Whereas in a hot rod deluxe, you get to about two and a half and that's it. There's nowhere to go. Yeah. When you've got the high headroom of a, of a big power section, you've just got much more latitude to use that gain range. And if you, th you know, thinking about it, it's like 100 watts versus 40 watts. In yeah. reality, um, it's, you know, it's like 4 dB extra gain. It's not a, you know, but it's so interesting playing with that extra bit of headroom. I'm not getting that harsh speaker-ness. I, I felt instantly connected. It's not taking anything away from that, but it's like, I'm there with that app straight away. There's a bit more there. Okay, we'll just do that quickly with humbuckers a sec. Um, just to see where that sort of break point is. I've deliberately picked this up. And it's in tune too, which is always nice. So if we go back to the Hot Rod Deluxe a sec, bear in mind we're on two and a half on the Hot Rod Deluxe. And um, this is the Hot Rod Deluxe on two and a half. Pretty sweet. That really prominent mid range is there. Actually, it, works well with the humbuckers. Yep, and yeah. it is just breaking up. Yep. Um, so uh, V140. Is more refined to me. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Uh, and um, in what way would you characterize that? It's just more even. It doesn't have that that poke. It just uh, it just sounds like the guitar. I'll push the gain a bit. In the room, at least, there's just more of everything. Yeah. In addition to that, you've got a couple ways in which you can shape that. So there's a mid, of a function called mid kick, which just puts a different nose on the upper mids. Right. If you wouldn't mind, it's the second. It's well, the the, bit, the switch yes. next to the bass switch. <laughs> What I like about position two, so on the V40, I think there's only two positions. Right. But on the 140, there's three. And it gives you that extra bit of clon up top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If what you want 
is more range from that clean channel, there's a really good option. Bigger, fuller, much wider range of overdrive. Yep. And I think compared to the Hot Rod Deluxe's very nasal second mm. mode, mm. that just retains the niceness of the clean sound, but just adds more gain on it. Which is interesting because a lot of people think of the V40 and the V140 as a clean platform. It's got tremendous amount of overdrive yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, I'll just finish on that because if you are a player of kind of classic humbuckers mm -hmm. and you want a Britishy blues kind of sound. <laughs> right where blues meets rock. Yeah. That's pretty amazing actually. I didn't know One channel. it would do that. Yeah. Really nice thing. Very so cool. loads more money. Yeah, very cool. Do you like it more than the Hot Rod Deluxe? That's really up to you. Yes. But certainly we know a lot of people who've gone from Hot Rod Deluxe to Victory yeah, yeah. V40, yeah, yeah. V40 Deluxe and V140. Interesting. Okay, so if the drive channel is the thing that's really off-putting to us, what do we do? It would be, we would be entirely remiss not to have a Mesa Boogie in this video because Indeed. for all of my lifetime anyway, the upgrade from a Fender amp has been a Mesa amp. Right. Long before your Friedmans and your Tone Kings and all your boutique, modern boutique amp brands came along, Mesa Boogie was the place to go. Mm -hmm. Now, the amp that I played for years was the Lone Star. It's no longer made. Right. That would, that would be my first recommendation. Yep, yep. Two channels, both more flexible in their clean and dirty sounds than the Hot Rod Deluxe. Such a classic amp. It's just it's really great amp. Yeah. But Boogie decided to go in two directions with their sort of middle middle range amps. One was the Fillmore, which is more kind of um, mid 60s black panel inspired. Yes. And the other one is the Cali Tweed, which is more Tweed inspired. And that's what we're going to go with because that's what we've got. And a lot of people have asked about this amp. Okay. And we're back in the room. <laughs> Mesa Cali Tweed. Why not something more black panel inspired? Uh, it is a good question and maybe. The Hot Rod Deluxe does have that very strident mid-range. Indeed. Certainly it's really hard to get rid of that, right? Bit more martial mid-range about it, I would say. Interesting. And the way that manifests and pushes, to me, has more in common with a Tweed. Right. type thing than yeah. a standard black panel type thing. So, Hot Rod Deluxe then, Dan. Sounds great. Yeah, I, I, great isn't the word I would use. It's a completely different um, EQ, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally, different. totally different. Yeah, but there's a sponginess to it. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's dig into that sponge. And given that we're talking about the the gap between clean and overdrive, yeah, that's to me anyway where this excels. Right. So at the moment, so it has a, um, I think it's called multi watt. It may so call it multi watt. I think. Um, where it goes from its full power at 40 watts. Okay. All the way down to two watts. So it has oh, a wow. built-in 
attenuator of sorts, it, uh, and it actually changes the configuration of the output tubes. Oh, so wow. you've got four 6V6s. Wow, okay. Four 6V6s. Okay, so it's going to, to two of them, then to a single-ended one. Uh, yeah, and of combinations, I'm not sure it ever does single-ended, might do, but it does variations of pentode and triode. Amazing, okay. To get that, um, to get the drop in power. But what it means is this. We went all the way from 40 watts with the gain low and the master high to two watts with the master low, sorry, with the master high and the gain high. It was flat out at the end before we went, got that. That's again. pretty remarkable, actually. Um, so you can get like small amp cave in. Yep. And that's pretty cool if you've got. I mean, very cool on a tally, that sort of sound, because the, like the, Quickness, the mid range and punch of that telly sort of works really well with that sort of sort of caving in sound. Yeah. Just add some humbuckers to the mix a sec. If you um do the do. Okay. That is super, super powerful. So it's like all shades. Yeah. The EQ is crazy. Yeah. Play for a sec.
sorry, I know we're trying to hold the, you know, hurry this along. That is awesome. That is awesome. EQ flat out, 20 watt mode, gain flat out. Master wow. uh, about 10 o'clock. Okay. Let's just remind ourselves of the Hot Rod Deluxe. Hold on, hold on. So we'll go in the mid gain of the Hot Rod Deluxe. <laughs> Uh, that is pretty good. Fascinating. And a good, if, if what you want is those in-between sounds, there's plenty of clean headroom in it, as, yep. we, as we discovered at the beginning there. Yep. But if you're interested in those in-betweenies. And that, so the, the, that tweed thing. The more right? urgent. That, yeah, it's so cool. It's a good shout for that. And then, you know, the multiple watt thing, multi-watt stage means that you can balance that output power versus the kind of overdrive you want. Very cool. Okay, so. Let's say then, what we want is something that's got the clean channel, something that's got the, a usable dirty channel that aren't a million miles away. The big thing for me, I could use the clean channel. I could maybe, no, I'd find it really hard to, to find the dirty channel. Certainly no way I could use them together. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what about an amplifier that has a couple of channels, but that sort of work in perhaps a more pleasing way. Yeah, yeah. So two channels that work together and maybe a bit of attenuation. Well, surprise, surprise. Back in the room. Tone King Imperial Mark II. Dan and I acquired this over a year ago now, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it's fast become one of our favorite amps. Indeed. Because of lots of the things we've been discussing so far. Flexibility in the clean channel. Mm -hmm and an overdrive channel to boot, which actually sounds really cool. And then yep. it's got some quite interesting features in attenuation. Yes. Which brings some of those real world volumes within reach. Right. Plus it's got reverb and tremolo. We didn't talk about the tremolo in the V140, but it does have tremolo. This has trem too. Sure. Maybe we'll touch on it, but um, okay. Hot Rod Deluxe and Dan Clean, as we've heard. Mid-range in a completely different place yeah, to the Hot yeah, Rod yeah, Deluxe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know, just sounds a bit nicer to me. Whether it would cut as well in a mix is a really good question, because what it is missing is that nose, yeah, yeah, yeah. nose on the... It's more derived of a um, 65 type black panel deluxe reverb is, right. is what it's more derived of. Two 6V6 output tubes for 20-ish watts, I think, 25 watts, something like that. Interesting. So it doesn't have the headroom of the Hot Rod Deluxe, as we'll hear. I'll turn mm. it up. Mm. Mm. That's halfway.
Gonna have bite to eat, still be hearing that. Uh, that was full volume on the clean channel. Wow. Now in addition, it's got a built-in um, Tone King attenuator. Right. What's cool about the attenuator is you can you can give it to the overdrive channel only or the clean channel. Okay. Uh, at both channels, should I say. Right. So you can leave the clean channel high headroom and have the huge have the El Granjo going into the yeah, yeah but in, in the interests of uh, whatever here is the clean channel with the attenuator Seriously. Sound. Literally down to nothing with the attenuator. That's amazing. Lead, lead channel. That's really cool. Really, really cool. I think it's a gr I think it's a really nice sounding overdrive channel. It's not high gain. No, no. Can we just quickly get back to that clean channel though? I just yeah. want to try because we haven't used any pedals yet. So <laughs> magic. I just want to quickly hear um, a gain pedal yeah. and a delay into the clean channel. Okay, because we've got the reduced headroom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
And there is a fantastic demonstration of why people love the Hot Rod Deluxe, because it is such a fantastic pedal platform. Now... Because of the headroom. Because of the headroom, right? Interestingly though, I still think the Tone King, at the, at the lower volume, right? Uh, for me, it sort of integrates more into the amplifier, right? It works with the, with the gain of the amplifier. But you can't argue that that, you know, because we've got the extra lift when we need it, yeah. it's like, oh, you want solo now? No problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, just for the record, the Tone King is not attenuated. It's set on the clean channel at the point of where it's starting to break up. So there isn't much more headroom. It will go a little bit louder, obviously, but there isn't a great deal more headroom there. So mm. the Hot Rod Deluxe really showing its boots there, the, those 6L6 um, output tubes. I don't know if the output transformer is a little bigger, but... Anyway, definitely handling the headroom more. If that had been the V140, the Victory, Through the expect roof. that yeah, yeah. in aces. Yeah, yeah. It would have lifted the roof off. The Mesa kind of depends where you've got it set. I, I think it's going to be somewhere between the Tone King and the Hot Rod Deluxe. Right. Four six V6s, it ought to have decent headroom. Mm -hmm. But because it's pushed, because it's tweed derived, I think it's going to cave in a little bit sooner. Interesting. Okay, you can pick one. I, I've got to walk away with one amp today. We can walk away with one amplifier today. Oh, and it can't be the two rock. <laughs> um, one of those. Th one of the. One of the four. Uh, it's really tough. It's a. It's a toss up between the Tone King and the Victory. Because straight out tone volume, headroom, all the things I love about guitar sound, the Literally. V140's yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, totally. So it's that. Mm -hmm. Real world, it's that. Totally, yeah, yeah. Are we in agreement? I mean, I feel exactly the same way. However, I, because I've, I've played a, like a J20 Tweed Deluxe type amplifier for, for years, and I do love it, it's wonderful. The um the the Kelly Tweed it has reminds me of that. I love that cave in thing with the telecaster. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a magic sound. Yeah. Um in all honesty, give me any of those. <sighs> I've always loved the V140. It's my favourite victory amplifier. Yeah, I've just changed my mind anyway. Right. Yeah. So carry on, sorry. Uh <sighs> I'm gonna Tone King. Tone King. I'm going with the V140 because I said, oh, in the real world. Yeah. Actually, that's not loud enough in the TPS band. Very true. In the clean channel. There's yeah, not enough clean headroom in the no. TPS band. But next to my next to the matchless, it'll, it'll work. <laughs> cool. Very good. Okay, I hope that was helpful. It was a bit random. The amp choices are a little bit random. There's a lot more out there you can choose from. But we hope, nonetheless, it might give you at least some questions. Yeah. If not these three amps that we've looked at, in the amp that you're looking for, some of the things that might be relevant to you. Yep, totally. And if you are a uh, Hot Rod Deluxe user, a couple of quick things you can do. Look at the speaker. Speaker, speaker upgrade is a really common thing to do with that amplifier. Also, something like putting an EQ in the effects loop yep. um, you know, can help with some of those things. But uh, certainly, you can. it's such a popular amplifier. Oh, man. It, it, it's... Its popularity and the amount it is loved across the world is so thoroughly well Magic. deserved, yep. especially when you kick it with a couple of pedals. Magic. Thank you so much for watching. This has been really fun. Um, uh, again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch. T-shirts and strings and hats and pedals and all the stuff. It does help us keep the lights on. It does keep the lights on. In indeed, <laughs> indeed. Um, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey, where I think you can buy all of this stuff. Indeed. And our dear friends in Australia. Pedal Empire of Brisbane in Queensland. And we have some links in the description. We do. If you click on the links through to Sweetwater in the description below uh, and buy stuff, Dan and I get a kickback off that and it helps fund the show. Yep. And a big shout out to our patrons on Patreon as well. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Um, please join us at 5 p.m. British time, whatever that may be, on Monday for viewers' comments and questions where we all hang out and um, ask questions and all that stuff. Loads of fun. Yeah, ask us about amps. Indeed. Maybe see you there. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.